hernia, I'm sure a lot of you must be knowing that hernia is a protrusion of viscous or a part of viscous uh, through a weakness or a defect in anterior abdominal wall. It can be seen in all age groups and in either of the sexes. It's the most, one of the most common surgical conditions. The surgical description and treatments of hernias, hernia dates uh, to most of the ancient civilizations. A lot of people think it's a new disease, but no. One of the earliest documentations appeared in uh, 1500 BC in Egypt. The hernia repair went through ma many changes during 15th and 20th centuries, but uh, the landmark was the introduction of surgical meshes for repair of hernias, which was used since 1891. Uh, P. Fletcher performed the first laparoscopic hernia surgery in 1979. Well, uh, this is a very brief slide about types of hernias. Uh, based on the cause, the hernias can either be congenital, that is by birth, or they can be acquired, uh, they, that is they develop later in life. That is, you know, when you grow old, the muscles become weak. And uh, that time you can develop a hernia. You can develop a hernia post-pregnancy. You can develop a hernia after lifting very heavy weights. So based on that, uh, they can be, they are called as acquired hernias. Well, based on clinical presentations, they can be reducible. So hernia basically is, you know, there is an opening in a muscular or the fascia layer through which the contents of the abdomen try to come out. So initially they come out and they go back in. So they're called as reducible. Then the next stage is irreducible where the contents of the hernia come out and then they don't, do not go back into the abdominal cavity. They're just there. And then there are other stages called as obstruction or strangulation. Well, based on the site of hernias, hernias can either be groin hernias that very commonly 70 to 75% of all abdominal hernias are inguinal hernias and femoral hernias. Surprisingly, when hernias are more common than femoral hernias and they're more common in females. Well, when, uh, the other uh, uh, site is ventral hernias, that is between the uh, rib cage and your uh, you know, pelvic bone. These are umbilical hernias, uh, paramblical hernias, epigastric hernias, spigillin hernias, and incisional hernias. Incisional hernias are the hernias which are given to you by a surgeon. So any surgery that we do, the chances of developing hernia are always there. So if you develop a hernia, at a scar or at a previous incision site, these are called as incisional hernias. And there's also an interesting hernia, which is called as a hiatus hernia, that is in the diaphragm. So a part of stomach of an, or an intestine, when they protrude into the chest, these are called as hiatus hernias. Well, laparoscope, now let's get back to ventral hernias. A laparoscopic hernia mesh repair is now the treatment of choice for most cases of ventral or incisional hernias. It is superior to open hernia. Uh, well, open hernia, as we call as invasive open surgery, is typically used for complicated or difficult hernias. That is, hernias having a diameter of more than 8 centimeters, patients presenting with hernia and skin necrosis, patients presenting with the obstructed hernias with multiple bowel loops, and of course, patients presenting with obstructed and necrosed omentum as contents of the hernia. For all these uh, cases, laparoscopic surgery has its limitations. But otherwise, the technique of laparoscopic hernia repair has almost been standardized. The ideal mesh that can be used, the management of the defect, either to close it or not to close it, and fixation of uh, fixation techniques of the mesh is still an area of debate. A lot of people have different techniques. So it, it, will, it may take some more time to standardize these techniques. But however, primary closure of the hernia defect and placement of the mesh interperitoneally is standardized. So closure of hernia defect leads to reduce uh, the possibility of a seroma formation and give better reinforcement of the wall. Well, the two methods, open and laparoscopic surgery, are often considered mutually exclusive. So either you do an open surgery or you do an laparoscopic surgery. There is no standard technique that has been uh, uh, advised or which is, you know, textbook technique for difficult or complicated hernias. But in cases with difficult techniques, we have we now nowadays do a combined open and laparoscopic hybrid techniques, which we have found to be very effective. These are also called as laparoscopic ventral hernia hybrid technique mesh repair. Well, in this particular technique, in these techniques, we avoid the dissection of large subcutaneous flaps to place the mesh, and hence benefits patients in very 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 big way. Well. If you see the screen on the left side, yeah, this is an open repair being done where you can see the size of the incision, the area that has been dissected to place the mesh. For a similar hernia, on the right side, if you see, we just make three holes and we repair the hernia laparoscopically. Well, both the techniques have their uh, limitations, but overall, 
a laparoscopic hernia repair is far more superior to an open repair. Well, a uh, little bit about open repair, you have to make a large incision on the skin. That is, if the size of the defect is 5 centimeters, you have to make at least three times. You have to make it 15 to 16 centimeters. Uh, you have to go beyond on either side, five, 5 to 6 centimeters beyond the hernia defect. That should be the size of your incision. And then you have to dissect all the planes. If you see here, you can see skin, subcutaneous flat, fat, and here we have to close the muscle. Basically, you have to dissect till the peritoneum. You have to do a proper laparotomy and it will condense to the peritoneum. And then make such a space in pre peritoneal space. You have to make such a big place to place the mesh. And mesh placement has to be what has been standardized. Another thing that has been standardized, standardized in what literature is whatever the size of the defect when you're going for surgery, if the size of the defect is five centimeters, then or beyond the margin, you have to place a mesh at least five centimeters beyond margin in all the directions. And then, of course, you close the rectus and the subcutaneous planes. But when you do such a big dissection, you cannot close this without placing a drain. So I just uh, want to, you know, I borrowed these uh, pictures from Cleveland Clinic. And here it's a very beautiful uh, you know, representation of a hernia with bubble loop here. And then see, this is the last layer. That is the peritoneum, and this is the muscle, and this is this is how much you have to open. If you see the last picture again, like the previous slide, you can see how much the dissection you have to do. And if you have to place a mesh, see this is the size of the dissection you have to do an open repair. Well, uh, there are only two ways uh, to place the mesh. One is above the muscle, one is below the muscle. And wherever you put the uh, mesh, you have to do a big dissection. However, Placing the mesh below the muscle layer and above the last layer, that is the peritoneum, is an ideal open surgery repair. So these are the disadvantages of uh, open repair. One uh, which uh, is very important is, suppose you, you know, the defect is 5 centimeters. Sometimes the contents, hernia contents may not be only present within the hernia. They may be present around the hernia. So we have to do something called adesiolysis. We have to release all the things that are stuck to the anterior abdominal wall, that is the intestine, the fat of the intestine. So when, <clears throat> sorry, when you do an intraoperative adicylysis in open surgery, either you have to increase the size of the defect or you have to do a blunt dissection, which may lead to bleeding, which may lead to uh, you know, injury to the bowel. And then, of course, as I told in the previous slide, you have, to, you have to have a large area to accommodate the mesh. You have to place a lot of drains, a couple of drains at least for three to four days which the patient has to have with him uh, or her because there may be some fluid, some serous fluid may be coming out from this huge dissection that we do. Sometimes multiple hernias can be missed because see, in an obese patient, ultrasound can miss a hernia. And when you go uh, by the thought of operating on one hernia, there can be one distal to it, one uh, you know, uh, proximal to it. There can be a, an umbilical hernia, which you will miss completely because you'll be focused on operating only on one hernia. And since you open limited space, you cannot open the entire abdomen to operate on a small uh, hernia. So hence, multiple hernias can be missed. There's increased morbidity. There's more pain, more chance of infection, hematoma formation. There's prolonged uh, recovery and hospitalization and getting back to work is also delayed. 